Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Matrix Call. So let's talk a bit. What is Matrix Call? We will start by introducing the interface. So I would say the most important thing is the ribbon menu on the top hand side of the screen. So as you can see, you have a set of tools and they are divided by this menu. Everything is color coded. So you have course, surfaces, solids, uh, tools. Let's be a bit more specific about this. Tools are some I would say jewelry specific tools. So let's see an example, for example, a cathedral ring. So this basically allows you to generate the lines that you can use to make a cathedral ring. Okay. It basically provides tool to make everything easy. Okay. Something important before I go any further, as you might have seen, some tools have a green lightning on the top hand side. That means that they are parametric. So for example, this ring that I just used, Cathedral Ring Builder, is parametric because it has this lightning here. So that means that I've created something, but I can always edit that at any given point. Okay. We will see that later. I'm going to make a ring later. I might use this tool and I'm going to show you how to edit your design. That's probably one of the strengths of this software that you can make a ring save it and you can always edit the ring really quickly really easy so you can have a final design just change it in a few clicks and it can save you a lot of time so let's see a bit more tools we have the ring rail the outside ring rail for example so for example something like this okay so we have a ring rail and an outside one we can always change it something like this for example and if we change the finger size, everything will update. Okay, that's because they are parametric. We have profile placer to add any kind of profile. We're certainly going to use that later. Um, what are the two some gems? We can use any kind of gems, of course. So here are all the cuts that I can use. As you can see, we have basically all the cuts that you're ever going to need. Um, and as you can see, because gem is a parametric tool, now it's here on my dynamic command stack. Okay. What else? Let's see settings. So, for example, if I have my gem here, I can just select the setting and I can make a head for my setting. Okay. Uh, we can make halos, bezels, any kind of tools for setting. Okay. Cutters. We have cutters to make. Um, to put stones on the side of the ring, to make central cutters, pave cutters, any kind of cutters. Transform would allow us to create patterns sometimes for with a smart pattern, for example, and basically any type of transformation, mostly including solids, but it really applies to everything. Then quite important, we have ClayU. ClayU is great. ClayU is great for organic modeling. So you might have heard that most jewelry specific software they are not designed to make organic jewelry made is what it is so you can make any kind of organic design using clay U. just a reminder if you need further information about this you can check the academy there's a ton of material in there they can show you how to make organic jewelry then we have the render the render basically is a tool that would help you generate pictures of your design. It's a professional render, so you need to assign materials to your model and then just click render. So it will generate an image that looks like a picture. Okay. View, it's quite specific, but it basically helps you to navigate the model. So just move around the model and help you design. Mesh is quite technical. I would say it's probably the most technical of all of them. It helps you prepare files for 3D printing. The same as Mesh or similar to Mesh, we have the Manufacturing tab. Manufacturing tab allows you to create sprues for 3D printing, to fix a mesh with the mesh repair, and other tools for different types of 3D printers. What else do we have? We have the quick commands here. Quick commands are the commands that you're going to use the most. You can customize this at any point just by 
selecting from here and you can decide which command to be visible here. Display modes. So this is actually really, really important. So you can always decide how to see a model. Okay. There are a ton of different visualization modes that will make you, it will help you model. It's quite personal the way it works. Some people use some of them. You don't need to use all of them but it really helps navigate the model. We have the layer menu. It works like any software, basically. Then we have the project menu, which is a tool that allows you to keep all your models in a structured and organized way. It's really important when it comes down to editing files. So you can always have a history of all the models you've done, okay? Just bear in mind that if you, by any reason, decide to move this around, which you can, you can always change the way everything is displayed. Let's say that you want to do it like that, but for some, I don't know, the minus like this, you want to revert back, you can always do it. You just need to go here, troubleshooting, reset the user interface, okay? So it allows you to change and position the panels anywhere you want, but you can always revert back at any point. You can even use the zoom to make the menu bigger or smaller, okay? Okay, so let's make a rank. Let's see what parametric is about. So as you can see, I got the ring size, the ring rail, sorry, in my quick commands because I obviously use it a lot. And here, it says dynamic commands and my ring rail is here. That's because the ring rail is parametric tool. What you can do, if you want, you can filter commands with parametric and now all the commands that you're gonna see are gonna be parametric, okay? So that's something to take into consideration if you're making a model that you think you might want to edit at some point. I strongly recommend to use parametric always because you never know if you might need to edit the ring. So I got my ring rate. Okay, let's put a start. Let's go to gems and I'm going to use gem on ring rail. As you can see, I got a stone there. Uh, bring it down. And I'm going to use, um, let's make a head. So head builder. I'm gonna put it that way. And let's change the number of tools, for example. Yeah? So I'm gonna do something like this. And actually what I might do is just change the base of the prongs slightly. Okay. Or I can even go back to level one and the prongs, I want to change the shape to something a bit more squarish, okay? And let's make it a bit bigger. Okay. So as you can see, the head now is here on the dynamic commands. That means that even if the command is finished, I can always go here and edit. So I always have the option to change it if I want to. Okay. So you can just save it like this and you can edit this at any point. Let's make the outside ring rail. So I can just select the finger rail, press the wheel mouse and do outside ring rail. If I don't want to do that, I can just go to tools and select outside ring rail. It's exactly the same thing. So you always have a few options. Okay. I'm just going to increase that a bit higher. 1.8, 1.8, that's fine. So end. I'm happy with that. So as you can see, an outside ring rail has been displayed here now. Okay. Let's add some profiles. So I'm going to select my finger rail, F6 and I'm going to do Profile Blazer. And as you can see, I can also see here this parametric, okay? So I got my profile in there by default and I don't want, I don't want it there, I want it here, okay? This is not the final position, but I'm going to make the ring and then change it, just so that you can see what parametric is about. That's my profile, but as you can see, it's not really touching the top. 
I wanted to dodge the outside ring drive. So I'm going to go here, outside ring drive, and select it. Okay, and then I want this profile on the other side as well. So just a profile. And now it's looking good, but maybe it's a bit too rounded. So let's change that profile to something more squarish. Okay, that's good enough. And then I want the ring to taper, so I want a smaller profile at the back. So I'm going to position this in there, but I don't want this profile, I want another profile. So let's use this one for example. And I'm going to make it... Okay, so now let's create the geometry. So just use sweep to rail. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use this, I quite like this. Okay, but let's say that I want to change a few things. Okay. With a regular software, you might need to delete this and the match start over again. You will need to change the profiles, but you will need to use sweep again. You don't need to do that here. So you can just go to profile placer, edit, and if I change the bottom one, you can see my ring is changing dynamically. Let's start changing things, like for example, let's assume that you have a new customer who wants this ring, but size 6. It's done. You don't need to change anything else. It's already been changed. Or the same customer wants to upgrade the stone to something bigger. Just go here and just increase from 6.4 to 6.8. It's done. Okay. Or let's change the shape slightly. You see this shape, maybe they don't like it. So just go to this profile, edit this profile, and maybe we can just do something like this and change this to something a bit more D shape at the back. See, it's a bit soft inside. And maybe. Yeah, something like that. Or let's change this shape to something lower. Okay, as you can see, we're constantly changing the ring. This is what parametric is about. You see how easy it is to change anything. So, just one last edit. Let's just change this to make it pretty much straight. Okay. So, you can even do this in front of your customer and you're really offering a really custom experience. Uh, that's everything for now. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, remember that there's a ton of content sorry, in the Academy and you can contact us privately for any assistance that you might need. Thank you so much.